Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Dr. Brian Davis. I am a clinical health psychologist with the Norton Neuroscience Institute. Today, we're going to talk about a very exciting topic, the impact of behavioral medicine in MS care. This is something that we are expanding within the Neuroscience in Institute and happy to bring you today. So what we're going to talk about today is, is understanding how MS symptoms and mental health conditions correlate. We're going to talk about who, who your treatment team is, how behavioral medicine fits in, and how we all integrate together. We're going to talk about things like depression, anxiety, adjustment, stress. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to talk about what we can do with that, how we can help. We're going to talk about the mind-body connection, as well as stress management and, and resiliency skills. So let's talk about... Uh, the patient experience first. So when I talk about uh, the MS population, it's coming from a sense of uh, how I view them. I view them with a sense of um, extreme strength and resiliency. And this is due to how um, day in and day out, um, they manage symptoms, they get through their day. And we're gonna talk about some of what these, what these symptoms are, but I wanna start out by just the the amount of strength and resiliency that, that I admire so much in working with this population. So some of these symptoms are physical symptoms, so things like uh, coordination, mobility, balance, vision. Some of them are invisible, things like fatigue, cognitive symptoms, pain symptoms, sexual dysfunction, mood concerns. And, and all of these together create for a very difficult experience for, for those trying to manage such, such symptoms. So, um, you know, some of these symptoms that, that, are, that, are, that are prevalent um, really lead to a lot of mental health conditions that, that are really normal, right? So, so when we think about everything that an individual managing MS symptoms has to go through, it's understandable that there will be some uh, mental health concerns, whether that's mood or anxiety or stress or adjustment that's involved in that. And what we see is, 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 is pretty consistent and higher, higher rates of mental health conditions in the MS population. Here we see in the orange and red is the MS population compared to the general population of things like depression, anxiety, adjustment, you name it, um, higher, higher numbers consistently. So it's important to have things like behavioral medicine, such as, such as what we bring just to, to the table and to the team, that we have this ready as a resource, as a support, and as an intervention to help MS patients. So MS brings a challenge because what it does is it, it can, it can shift, um, our, our, our life in, in a way that, that is, um, unrecognizable some, sometimes. So this can be with bring changes to, to work or maybe the ability to work, the ability, you know, uh, uh, roles within your family, family dynamics, um, independency, all these things that, that can really just, just fully adjust life in a way that's really hard and, and hard to continue to, to, to try to manage. Um, and, and I think when we talk, when we talk about that, understandably, there's going to be an emotional reaction to such a transition or just the stress of, of managing such symptoms that MS brings. So things like, like we talked about, anxiety, depression, grief, um, stress, these are all things that, that we, we expect to be there, but now we expect to provide intervention for, which is really helpful. And we're so happy and excited to, to, to bring this to the, to the table because what we found is that when, when we don't necessarily um, uh, provide intervention, it leads to exacerbation or worsening of, of overall MS symptoms as well as mental health symptoms. And let's talk about COVID and, and, and what we, we've been able to do is pivot with this pandemic, meaning you know, we understand that, that managing MS symptoms in general is very difficult and, and and now with the pandemic involved, maybe we're not able to see the people as often that, that are that are great um, that are great support for us. Or maybe we're not able to get to the places or participate in things that we're used to doing, causing more more isolation, more loneliness, more uncertainty. So, so there's another layer here that that that, that we sympathize with, and and we want to make ourselves available virtually, make ourselves available in any way possible. 
in terms of us within behavioral medicine to continue serving this population. So when we talk, talk about things like a pandemic um, or anything that kind of the world brings, know that the behavioral medicine team has the capability to, to meet the needs no matter what that is. And we're doing a lot of really positive virtual work currently. So within behavioral medicine, within the Neuroscience Institute, let's talk about what this team looks like. So this is health psychology, such as myself. This is neuropsychology. This is social work. We work on a, in a tight-knit team to provide really great services. On top of that, we work in an, an even larger team that includes your, your, your neurologist or other providers, too. We're constantly communicating, consulting one, one, one another, and, and really we're, we're like a lot of teammates around the, the, the individual patient providing really great services, and behavioral medicine is part of that team, and, and we're proud to be on that team. We also want to participate um, in the future in, uh, in research, so, so making sure that we are always providing uh, top of top of the line um, services intervention that that we can we can always improve on and we're always looking to do so. So when we meet with you, when you meet with behavioral medicine, what we do basically is we want to get to know you. We want to really build a strong, collaborative, supportive relationship with you. Um, this is done by building, you know, really positive rapport. Um, and, and basically what we want to do is create this collaborative relationship where we know that you're the expert of your own experience, right? So we definitely want you, you're a part of this treatment process and we want to make sure that you feel that and you feel comfortable in doing so. Um, we also like to provide um, assessment via uh, screeners. So things like depression screeners, anxiety screeners anxiety screeners. This gives us great information knowing where, where symptoms lie. So when we get these screeners, you, you, you'll, you'll get a certain number on, on them. And basically we track. So we look at here, you know, we, we, we see different levels of symptoms. That helps us um, prioritize things and alter intervention and kind of see where we're at in terms of uh, uh, symptoms, which is very helpful for, for us. So let's talk about some of these things like depression, like adjustment, like stress or anxiety. Um, so when we talk about things like depression, we've probably heard of the, heard of depression before. Uh, we may have been dealing with depression long before MS um, came. And 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 what this is 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 this is something that that we see in different facets. So, so this isn't necessarily something that is. Um, a reaction to MS. This could be something that, that that's been in your life. Um, for a number of years before the MS diagnosis. This could be something that, that is a reaction to um, the stressful life event, which is the management of, of MS. This could also be due to, um, you know, a neurological change due to um, your, your MS diagnosis. So, so this could be coming from multiple facets. So we're really interested in understanding what your symptoms are, how long they, they've been, the severity of, and, and we do a really good job at that, be, be tracking both doing clinical interviews as well as using um, screeners to uh, use quantitative information to help us out, out too. But again, with, with depression, this is very normal. We, 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 see, we see this very, very often, and, and we don't look at it as, as, as a stigmatized thing. It's, it's again, something that, that we're very good at treating, and, and, and we hope that you can utilize our services for. <clears throat> So why is this so important in terms of, of uh, treatment is because what research has shown is when one isn't treated, whether it's depression or anxiety or some of these other mental health conditions, quality of life decreases, disability increases, stress increases. We'll talk about the effect stress has on, on, on the body. Um, treatment adherence or treatment outcomes declines. You know, this can have negative effects in, in with work, with, 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 with family stress, with relationship stress. You know, this is things that that it's really important that that intervention is there for. Therefore, we can help and and help you um, better manage your MS symptoms by helping you on the mental health health side, which is all a part of of, of the mind body uh, connection that that we'll, we'll talk more about here soon. So in terms of treatment, we have a lot of a lot of modalities that we can use. So in terms of cognitive behavioral therapy, we also have acceptance and commitment therapy. We also have grief models, um, stress management. We, we will talk more about later. I think we have a lot of different areas to work with because treatment might not look the same for everybody, which is which is 
makes sense because MS doesn't look the same for it, for everybody. Um, depression doesn't look the same for, 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 for everybody. So, so we want to make sure we're flexible on our end too and what, what we can do to help. So we talk from this from an individual lens, but we also have supportive um, uh, groups too. So we do group therapy, support groups, et cetera, and we're building a, you know, a strong um, option-based approach where, where one can be seen in can be seen individually as well as within group. We also want to build community supports too. So getting involved in societies, Facebook groups, you know, there's so much out there that you can feel connected with and all these things together really lead to strong positive change. So more about, you know, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is CBT, what that means is how important your thoughts and behaviors and, 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 and feelings, how all these work together to, to create, um, a lived experience, right? So, so what happens sometimes when we deal with things like depression or stress or things like that is this this cycle can be can be hard and it can be um, negative and 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 what we want to do is not say hey you know that's that's no good we were kind of like no that's that's one that's one way that it can that it can be but but to work with you and to work with the individual person is that cycle can also be a positive one it's one that that we are again very very good at working with and 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 it's a way that that encapsulates a lot of things like behavioral technique cognitive tech techniques and and we see a lot of strong positive you know really strong positive change using it in addition to into the individual therapy, we can also talk about medications. Although I do not prescribe medications, I actively am aware of many anti antidepressants, anxiety medications. Um, therefore, I know proper dosages. I, I know names. Um, I'm very comfortable with referring, consulting, discussing with your providers in terms of uh, recommendations for um, medications if if a, if a change is warranted. If you're interested in trying something else for the first time, trying something new, we, we can work this into the uh, treatment plan, no problem. Adjustment. So when we talk about adjustment, you know, that's kind of naturally what, what one does in dealing with the MS diagnosis. You're adjusting to it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stressful life event. So therefore, um, adjustment isn't looked at as, as a stigmatized thing. It's, it's very understandable and very, and very normalized. So we see here 21% to 37% meet criteria for, for this adjustment um, this disorder, which is mostly around diagnosis or adjusting to a relapse, uh, you know, uh, dealing with symptoms. You know, so so again, the, when, we, when we deal with this, you, you're basically reacting to a to a to a stressful event, and you're developing symptoms of of stress or anxiety or depression within within three months of that event happening. We see this often, so so it's something again we're very very good at treating, very good with helping with. Well, as anxiety, anxiety is very normal. It's normal for the general population. It's normal for the MS pop population. So when we see things like irritability, restlessness, um, excessive worry, fear, um, trouble controlling worry, rumination, or racing thoughts, you know, th these are things that, again, we, we are very good at treating. We, we see a lot of it, and we're very good in terms of intervention. So, so everything that we've talked about thus far in terms of depression, in terms of adjustment, in terms of anxiety, um, these are all things that, that, that we are very, very practiced in and are very excited to help you with. And stress management. So, so this is another factor of, of, of treatment that, that's very important because, as we know, stress does negative things to our body when it's there for an extended period of time. So, you know, stress, you know, releases the cord, uh, re, you know, releases cortisol, which is the, the stress hormone, and 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 your body's constantly messaging with itself to, to figure out what what it thinks it needs to do in a given situation. And sometimes it thinks it needs to prepare you to fight or flight or to protect yourself. And it, it can only do, it can only turn that on. And, and when it does that, it, it turns on other systems in, in, in your body that actually stresses your body out even more. This is really important because MS is an autoimmune disease. And when this, this, when stress is in and, and this fight or flight response is kicked on, it's negatively affecting your immune system. What that does is that exacerbates or worsens MS symptoms, mental health symptoms, et cetera. So stress is something we want to be able to work with and, con and, and control. 
and this has been researched very, very highly. So this is a this is an um, study done in 2012 by David Moore. Basically, what it did was it randomly assigned um, MS patients to a stress management therapy group and to a control group, therefore not receiving stress management th uh, therapy. And what it was measures what, what what was measured was in their MRI brain lesions. Um, so so what the um, Stress management group did was was you know taught met, taught re relaxation meditation strategies to calm their physical responses right and some of their physiological uh, responses as well um, and what what happened was you know with with time in these stress management therapy um, uh, treatments what happened was they showed significantly fewer brain lesions compared to, to the control group. Um, and I think that that this study was relatively groundbreaking because we didn't know the extent that stress was playing in um, MS symptoms and the exacerbation of the symptoms of brain lesions, which leads to to other um, other physical symptoms that just that are very very difficult. And what's also interesting is is when they when they completed the 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 stress management therapy and they didn't keep going. Um, new lesions were detected, meaning the importance of continued stress management skills. And these are things that we can teach help with, and these are things that you can continue to utilize with with us. And we'll we'll talk more about that. So, for us, what we do, it's it's a it's a four session stress man stress management protocol, and we meet once a month, and we we provide education around your physiology. Um, around breathing skills, use some CBT skills involved, mindfulness skills. And what this does, we use a lot of biofeedback as well, kind of measuring your heart rate. And what we do is, 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 we, is we, we send you out and want you to practice these, these skills outside of session. And when you come back, we have to build on that. Have you practice, come back, and you build on that. And we've seen tremendous results in terms of physiological change, people being able to relax their body, turn off that stress response, therefore improving MS symptoms, improving mental health symptoms, and, and, it, and it's really, really impressive, and we're re very good at uh, providing such, such skills. A lot of it centers around your breathing. You know, what's interesting is only 12, uh, 12 breaths per minute or more is can is considered a hyperventilative state. And a lot of the overall population isn't very good at efficiently breathing. What that means is they're messaging to their body based on how they're breathing to turn on or off um, their um, sympathetic nervous system that, that turns on the uh, fight or flight response. So, so based on their breathing, they're dictating what's going on physiologically. So naturally what we do is, is we, we start by getting really good at, at deep breathing skills using your diaphragm. Um, so so, so we, 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 we do this process through, through, through creating better, more efficient breathing. Um, you have a few different breathing techniques. Again, it's, it, it's, a, it's a skill building, so you get better and better at it. We work in some mindfulness skills too, and this, this, this results in, in less, less tension and overall sense of well-being that is so helpful in terms of symptom management. And something, because you get really, really good at this, this is something that you continue post-treatment post, uh, as well. So circular breathing is just one aspect of it. So so this is a very er, early on, and and it gives you gives you a sense of uh, what we do here. So if you want to practice this, you can. I like to put one hand on my chest, one hand on on your stomach. Your short, shallow, inefficient breathing that turns on your sympathetic nervous system, or is that chest breathing, right? So what we want to do is work more of the diaphragm. So that hand you put on on your stomach, make sure you are able to extend that out via your via your stomach, right? So that's where you're gonna be breathing with your diaphragm. And when you breathe, I want you to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, using that diaphragm, not your chest. And with circular breathing, we, we inhale for three seconds in through our nose, hold for three seconds, and exhale for three, three, three seconds. And mathematically, you're breathing nine breaths per minute and you're really turning off the sympathetic nervous system in your body and you're turning on what's called the parasympathetic nervous system, which is 
putting your body in a sense of, re, of, of relaxation, lowering blood pressure, lowering heart rate. Um, and this is so helpful in terms of communicating with your body in a helpful way. And these are the skills that, that we get really, really good at. So in terms of that too, also building resiliency. So, so you know, when I think of resiliency, I think of, um, you know, I think of a beach. So I think of um, we can't maybe stop the waves from coming in, but we can learn how to surf. Okay, so that's what I think of when I think of res when I think of resiliency. So how we learn how to surf is is we we understand kind of physiologically what's going. We understand and are educated on and, and really learn a lot of really positive things. Um, and when we can, when we do that, we we can manage differently. We can we can build coping skills, build relaxation skills, stress management skills, and this is so helpful. Um, because that leads to a different way of, of maybe framing things, looking at things, participating in things. And, and, in, and it allows us to pursue passions. It allows us to identify with ourselves in a positive way, uh, build that self-efficacy and really have a different experience in managing our MS symptoms. So here's some skills to develop resiliency here too that are so helpful. Maintaining strong social connections. We can't emphasize that enough. Building that strong team around you, whatever that looks like. It doesn't mean it has to be this great big, you know, 100 people. This could be just a nice core group that, that you really feel a positive response from. It's so helpful. Physical wellness, setting realistic goals, practicing gratitude, really staying in that present moment, utilizing mindfulness skills and relaxation approaches that, that we do allow you to stay and get that present moment focus that's so, so helpful. Um, you know, he, you know, increasing self, self-compassion. And, and these are all things that, that, that are, that are, um, further developed when we, when we use a stress management as well as just any of the individual approaches, um, that really build these, these, uh, resiliency, um, skills to carry with you post, post treatment. So, so that's really, really helpful. So just a few things here to, to cope with stress. I mean, five, five key things. I think of these as the uh, seeds to success, if you will, in dealing and managing with stress because stress is going to always be around, but what we can do to kind of manage it in a different way, right? Surfing the waves, if you will, I think is a really helpful thing, um, especially now with everything going on with pandemics and symptom management. There, there, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. So, so, Increasing overall wellness, you know, healthy diet, um, you know, good activity levels in terms doesn't mean necessarily going out to run a 5K every day, but just something that gets you up, up and moving, creating a routine out, out, out of that, um, connecting in terms of spirituality. This could be your faith. This could be nature. This could be anything that really you are salient to. Um, and working on uh, improving sleep. We'll talk more about that. But overall, your physical wellness is going to be so important when we talk about stress and overall symptom management. Also dealing with stress is taking a break from maybe things like media, things that really cause stress in your life. You know, So right now, it's a very challenging time. And, and if you notice that things kind of uh, stress you out, give yourself that, that time to, to take a break from it doesn't mean you necessarily detach from, but it's more of give yourself, a, give yourself time and a break and give yourself that practice of present moment focus and dealing with things that you value, that you get, you get a lot out of, um, which again, we can really help with a lot of these through, through our stress management. Um, so also with, again, back to sleep, this is so important. Sleep is something that, that your body seems to always want to, um, you know, Strives for healthy, healthy sleep. Basically, what your body is always figuring out is what messages you're providing it. So it's always trying to follow suit what it thinks you want it to do. So if we can create a helpful sleep routine that's consistent with good sleep hygiene techniques, um, these are things that are going to be so beneficial for stress, for overall symptom management, and things that we can and utilize and help with greatly. Again, connecting with others, having that strong support group and getting creative with how, how you want to connect with them. This could be FaceTime, this could be Zoom or Skype, this could be in person with a nice physical distance. This could, this could come in a lot of different ways, but maintaining that where, where it's so important to make sure socially we are still connected and, and um, and consistently being a part of that of that strong connection, very important. 
And again, back to the stress management te techniques, breathing techniques that you will become very good at. Things like visualization, mindful meditation. These are things that that are um, that are skill based that one can become very good at. Um, that, that are things that we can use in our everyday experience as more of a present moment focus um, that I think is so, so helpful. So, so I think that all these, all these things can be so helpful in terms of managing, managing stress, leading to further resiliency skills that we're so excited and have all the capabilities of providing. And we're so happy to be utilized and part of the team within the Neuroscience Institute. Also, I always like to throw out additional resources. So, you know, mental health hotlines. You're, you're, you're always a phone call away or a text away. There, there's never a time where you can't reach out to someone. So although times may be challenging, it may feel, feel like there's no one to talk to, there's always someone to talk to. So please utilize these resources as a way of um, avoid having these handy. So again, I hope I, um, I, hope I iterated clearly what behavioral medicine has to offer within the Neuroscience Institute between individual treatment, group therapy, um, helping you with community res resources, um, utilizing the team in a way that, that we offer so much in terms of res resources and opportunities to help because mental health concerns are normal. Mental health concerns are part of the part of the process that we can help with and utilize us as part of your part of your uh, provider team to help you with better overall symptom management. Again, my name is Dr. Brian Davis. Um, I am with the Neuroscience Institute. Please reach out um, if you ever need any assistance. Please feel free to schedule with us. Um, we, we, we look forward to helping and, 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 and being a part of your success and um, hope to see you soon.